everyone. This is Deepak. Hi, this is Rika. This is Harsha Vivan. It was awesome. Uh, we learned a lot from Harsha and his path-breaking journey, and it was awesome to see, like you know, how his multiple transitions uh, were so fruitful for his career. And uh, it was really awesome speaking to him uh, last week. Uh, so now, uh, uh, Harsha, I think uh, we. Left it at a point wherein we wanted to understand what are the major challenges uh, uh, that you encountered uh, while each transition was happening. I mean, like you have very academically diverse background: uh, botany, physics, bioinformatics, and you also have experience in uh, diverse professions uh, like academia uh, versus banking, so academia versus industry, for example. Uh, so. I know that there are many challenges, but how do you actually identify challenges, and more importantly, how do you sort of uh, pick out opportunities from those challenges? We just really want to know what is your uh, mantra of doing all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So, uh, yes, the challenge is there, and I think that the only thing that is most challenging is. Being adaptable to new things, whatever new thing comes up. So adaptability is probably the only challenge which covers all other levels of challenges in this kind of career, I think. Because every every transition brings new possibility of learning, but new um, new ways of thinking, and for which you have to adapt your skills in a different way, very different way sometimes, and. One more point that comes up is your team changes. They have different background, and you need to be having their vocabulary to interact with that team because somehow the in different fields right now the situation is like this that we do not have common vocabulary for all different sciences right now. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for to have this common vocabulary. Probably that will be a good idea, but right now it's not there. So different fields, different analytical domains. In my my case, they have different vocabulary. So if I know certain things from computational biology or my informatics side, they they are understandable by others, but not in the same words. And I need to be able to understand their vocabulary, which is the biggest challenge in adaptability. So just knowing the concept. Does not sometimes become practical. The more practical thing is to how you communicate with other fields so that you can use your skills over there. Everyone knows that everything, the knowledge is transferable and everything can be used for every other problem in some way. But if you cannot communicate effectively with your team, with your new team when you are transitioning, that becomes very challenging. And then sometimes people don't, people are not able to see the value in what you are talking. So. I learned these things throughout my journey. How to make people or make my uh, colleagues, make my group members understand what I'm talking about and how we can solve a certain problem with my techniques. Otherwise, even if everyone knows that you are quite skillful, they will not be able to uh, understand exactly what you want to say, and all the confusion just leads to. You being not effective enough in a new field, so I think this is uh, apart from this challenge. I think there is only one more challenge that I think of is um, so. In uh, I cannot speak for many different fields. I can speak only for the analytics or data science field right now mm -hmm. because I have not transitioned in totally different fields. Like I have never, like you said, banking. But I did not do banking as such. I went to the bank for data science, which is just handling yeah. their data. Right. So uh, I will be frank that I have not, even if my career seems diverse, it's not diverse in that sense. I have not totally changed. I have not gone into art, art or drama or anything as such, which is which will be very very different. So not that kind of transition. So only data science. In that, there is another challenge is. Um, You do not know the domain very to its core. For example, in my field, when I was doing PhD for five, six years, if someone says carbon atom in a protein, mm -hmm. so many things come to my mind. 
just with this one word carbon so many associations what does carbon do what are so from its atomic structure to whatever knowledge that i have acquired till now everything comes to my mind and all these associations help me do the analytics if anything is related related to that but now in bank when i went there on the uh, second week there was a meeting and someone was saying, saying something about loan mm-hmm. so with this word loan i only understand that bank gives you money and <laughs> you pay the loan back to the bank with some interest that only only this much nothing more than that right. and that's really a restricted view of that domain right so but but another person who is who has been in bank for in whichever field of the banking but for many years he will have so many associations with this word loan he will know so many other things which are connected to loan and that makes a lot of difference because if you do not know that domain very clearly whatever methods you bring in they will be limited by your sphere of understanding of that domain right so right. this was the second level of challenge so you have to spend extra time understanding right. the domain maybe not not just mugging up the words and information but right. to understand the philosophy of that domain right so likewise i knew in bioinformatics if someone says dna i know so many things about dna right there are so many techniques associated with dna from my right. friends from your biology i know many other things but in bank someone says investment someone says loan those things were very new to me and i had to spend extra time to understand what they are and where they matter right much more than what i had expected actually but it was really interesting as uh, when i understood more and more about these new things i uh, my interest actually increased right. how i will be able to use my methods and what else can be done in that field so yeah these two things is adaptability and extra efforts to understand a domain if you have transitioned into that domain right so i have i have a question which is actually linked to this and i i really like your point of saying a vocabulary in the science because we have really different vocabulary mm-hmm. when you have a transition from one field to another field so as we are talking about what what we should keep in mind so i want you to know like when you you have done this uh, transition from maybe i can say botany to bioinformatics where you don't know anything like you know it's although i know that it's a bioinformatics that means there is a continuation of science again but there will be a completely different new things to learn uh, mm-hmm. maybe in like a programming or the, those kind of thing and even the another transition which was kind of a major like from phd to a city bank so while doing these transitions uh what are the skill sets which was necessary for you so first as you already mentioned i think the communication was the key right when you say loan then communicating what is loan and uh, as a lay person we only understand loan is like you know getting money from the bank but then yeah. you have to understand lot of different things with respect to loan is same thing must have happened during your phd or even while right now what you are doing with the post doc where this you are doing a image analysis Hmm. so uh, are there any particular soft skill or a technical skill set which you need to take in the mind while doing a transition so that is my first thing and another thing is like while even interviewing this thing uh, for your transition did you keep anything particular in mind uh, so uh, any any particular ex- uh, ex- experiences you want to share mm mm-hmm. yeah, like i think, I think first i said being like, receptive I mean, was the most yeah important thing being receptive for things was the most important thing mm-hmm. uh so in phd it was not very conspicuous because you get a lot of time to absorb new things right so right. your phd in your phd you are not supposed to give results in your first two months of your right. phd right uh-huh. so so that was really different so in phd of course from informatics to other some some different way of computational biology it needed some kind of absorption of new knowledge and trying to adapt but the time frame was so long for that that it did i did not feel it that much but compared to that uh when i went to city bank you are expected to give at least some results by the end of second month of your journey so wow. in the next phases when you actually 
go beyond phd i think mm-hmm. you are expect your the expectations from the employer become much more same thing for post doc as well right post doc is even if it is a science field it's a different career than phd mm-hmm. and you are expected to give returns in a short amount of time after your right. joining right. and that two month three month whatever it is when you want to give your first results of whatever you did as soon as that becomes in terms of months it becomes very very challenging sometimes that you have not clear understanding of everything and you still have to give results and at that time i think being receptive trying to understand and communicate with your peers as much as possible is really essential because okay. those are the closest contacts who will give you the most intricate knowledge of this field of this specific mm-hmm. team or whatever project is going on so if if i had not been receptive enough i might not have done uh, given the results in few months time so trying to get more knowledge and being connected with your peers is really important when you have transitioned right. and underestimating anyone in your new team for whatever you had before is not really a good idea so sometimes it might happen that you feel that you don't really need certain knowledge from a new person because you think that you already knew something mm-hmm. and you are enough for that but it's not always true and being open for getting more information getting more knowledge from the new persons is really useful in a new team especially with drastic change in the domain because that even just imagine when we are writing paper as well in science what is the most tricky what is the trickiest part of writing it's not the methods methods are probably the easiest part of writing yeah. the paper true. True. because you know them that this is what has to be done right. but the most difficult part is for the introduction and the discussion part right where you really need to know the domain true. so domain is really very important than the methods methods are going to help you understand the domain even in a better way further way but is yes, so just the so in terms of soft skills uh i cannot label any soft skill as such but being receptive to new ideas and your peers especially is really important if you cannot work in team in a transition then it is everything is up to you and then there are limits what one person can do i'm not saying that some people might be there who can do everything on their own no problem for some people but if we think of average person like me then yes i need to connect <laughs> to other people to know many things being too modest i think <laughs> is there any particular way of study you followed while this uh, doing the transition like for example as, as i said like you started with botany and then you came to a bioinformatics mm. so is it like you you have to follow certain particular way that okay i have to go to the basics understand the basics is that you are always the study or like what was your strategy you know what i mean like is yeah it ha- actually it has changed over time i now i realize when you say this that it, uh-huh. uh, my strategies have changed over time and uh more recently i have been thinking in a different way but i will tell you how i used to think before sure uh so i was always interested in fundamentals understand the basics of all the things right. and which was really useful in some way for whatever i did so especially mm-hmm. when i transitioned from from art science is what i need to by informatics correct. correct you need to of course i used to like programming even before so it was not a big change for me but of course if you are doing it as a coursework in masters degree mm-hmm. you need to um really go into the details of everything and try to understand that and i love doing that and i always thought that in all stages everyone has to know the fundamentals if they want to have success in that field right but now more recently uh since i'm working a lot on machine learning and so called artificial intelligence mm-hmm. uh, in my in both my previous careers i did that so now i'm thinking slightly in a different way and i think that is also a rational way of thinking so um uh, i think two two weeks back 
we were having a discussion in a group about uh, this machine learning ai stuff and there were some people who said that it's just statistics and mathematics just it has been relabeled rebranded as machine learning and artificial intelligence but it's nothing more than statistics and machine uh, statistics and mathematics so if someone knows the most fundamental things in stats and maths then that's as good as understanding machine learning and ai right but it's not true to its entirety i think because for example anything that becomes very very overwhelming it's too rich in information mostly goes from fundamental to a state of art so in english you if you know this terminology they they call if if some technique becomes very very sophisticated you call it state of art so it's kind of a art you don't really have to think of fundamentals for example if you are driving a car you don't have to know how the engine is going to run and right. how all your combustion chambers are working you don't really have to think about that but your art of driving your skill of driving is kind of now independent from your understanding of working of a car so in your sense it's just an art if you are a driver if you are a skillful driver you know the art of driving so same thing is probably happening with this statistics and mathematics it's becoming so elaborate in this journey towards machine learning and ai that it has kind of become art so we will see i think many people who do not really understand all the fundamentals of stats and maths but still are very good at using these machine learning techniques and ai techniques and yeah so now my my notion is changed a little bit that you don't really have to have all the fundamentals if you want to use something but of course if you want to develop that method further there is no other way than knowing the fundamentals right so understanding if you want to design a new car you have to know the engine right right so but if you want to drive a new car you can still drive a new car <laughs> that's so a very you, good point of you knew the fundamentals you got to know the fundamentals and then you decided that oh fundamentals are not really important anymore <laughs> it depends on what you want to do i think <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah, if I want to develop a new machine learning algorithm, I there is no escape for me. I have to know the fundamentals and use the fundamentals. True. True. No, true. I mean, like, uh, indeed, it is important. I, fundamentals. I think most of the people what they do is that I think particularly for the younger generation who are uh, say in the bachelors or so, mostly it's uh, the study or uh, is mostly focused upon the results. So. Mm-hmm. it's like this like you know i mean think of the first year bachelors or the first experiment that you did in the early high school or something so because that experiment has been done too many times over the years you know the result so people generally what they do is that they write the result and then they write the protocol for it so they don't really bother about the experimental process but they just write the result and then they follow the experimental process and then if the experimental process does not yield the result then they start thinking mm. for oh, what went wrong and then uh. they to you know alter it so that the result comes which is a very poor way of experimental design and uh, uh yeah. <laughs> i think that's accidental way of doing an experiment <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no i mean the reason why i say this is because uh most of the people particularly from the younger generation nowadays are more focused upon the result part of it okay so mm-hmm. it like this in biology recently um, crispr cas9 based genome editing has been like the hot shot thing so everyone mm-hmm. even bachelors is like okay fine i want to uh, get into this particular field without any understanding of what are the implications towards it what is the basics for it. because this field of genome editing actually has been for the past so mm-hmm. many years. uh same way is uh, this this particular field of ai artificial intelligence and yeah. machine learning actually has been there for several 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 years yeah it is just that there have been certain components that have been sort of come into the market's view now that everybody is now starting to jump into machine learning and ai and everything uh, but in your case i think uh, you have had this passion for a long period of time and uh, since you also mentioned that you were really interested in programming and you were really interested in understanding the fundamentals at least before mm-hmm. so uh, i think i think it has been uh, it has played a very wonderful part i am Like I have been dying to ask this question since the beginning of this meet, 
after going through all these transitions and journeys and all like where do you see yourself like what oh, is your yes. career goal like what is <laughs> where, do, where does harshvardhan stop <laughs> so maybe i will ask the question is it necessary to stop or fix it <laughs> yeah i mean like of course of course uh, uh, when i say stop you don't really need to have a hard stop but is there any particular area or is there something that you want to see yourself doing i mean don't really say that i want to be in research and all of that because that's like a very classic answer but then just give me like a a, a field of choice or maybe like a area of interest or something yeah. that you want or to maybe where do you up. see yourself or something like yeah, that yeah or whether your life will continue to jumble us all like you know all along well very difficult question i think <laughs> because from the beginning i never fixated on any goal okay i really just invested in the process of it and goal became a consequence so if something is a consequence of what i am doing it's more of a predictive thing and it may not really be the exact thing so even now i really enjoy what i am doing and i am i'm just ready to learn new things and learn whatever is necessary if i have a problem to solve if i want to do something if something is necessary that drives what i'm going to do now hmm. so i don't really think i have fixated on any goal right now i have a lot of interests and whatever is necessary i am ready to learn that and use that so okay. then goal does not become relevant at all for me but maybe if you ask me for a short term i cannot say for a long term because there could be many different things that i might have to do and i will do those things but for the short term if you have to ask me then right now i am looking into um trying to make this valley that has happened between academics and industry little smaller because i have heard this from many of my friends and even from my phd juniors and we used to have these discussions all the time i think many people already have these discussions so many times that there is a big gap between academics and industry okay. and there is limited scope in academics and there are so many academicians postdocs phd's who of course want to have a job because otherwise how will they survive okay. but they do not really have enough accommodation in academics so they need to go to industry some of them at least have to go to industry and then if there is this big gap between academics and industry then it becomes really tough for many people and i would really like to work towards that part because i see this as a challenging situation for many people including myself that yeah. if i have to go to industry leaving academics it is not very straightforward although i might mm-hmm. still have a skill set that's necessary that's useful in that right. industry so, so can i ask So for short term, this one, part is very interesting to me. Okay, so can I ask one uh, question? Because you have done the application of your data science and everything, still in biology. Okay, right? If I understand mm. correctly, so uh, is it like are you looking towards uh, continuing your application of data science or like bioinformatics or those computer related uh, skills into biology? or you if given a choice again given a chance mm-hmm. whether you will go into like more nowadays i can see uh, being a part of us i can see like you know uh, this automated cars and all yeah, those like you know tech yeah self driving cars <laughs> and those kind of things so do you see yourself still in doing something in biology or that kind of or life sciences thing or you given a choice you would like to move to some or the technology Uh, related thing like what would be your next uh, mm. interest i can say yeah you so right, right now i have been uh, interested in non biological problems as well so i have few in mind and i'm trying to read more about that if i can so this i'm asking because this so, i'm asking because you have previously done some bank which is like a non biology application yeah. of your data science thing so what what you enjoy most and where you look forward to going in both the directions i can ask so um for biology um right now my expertise in biology is not really very vast compared to what all has been done in biology compared to that uh the image analysis <laughs> or the technical part of it is uh has become more comfortable 
in my personal view but of course like i have said before transitioning does is not really uh it's not it it could be difficult but it's not forbidden for me i have never <laughs> never kept it uh out of my choices so there is still a chance that i will transition into totally different things but given that biology also is also very diverse the scope is kind of balanced right now for me so even if i go to biology there are so many things that i may not know even if i go to some other technical field there are again so many things i do not know so there is no particular bias in that sense in my mind but recently i have been thinking about many different fields apart from biology which are which need certain knowledge from different fields and diverse knowledge from fields mm-hmm. which i think i can handle at this stage so i am not really restricted to biology right now and i am as open to other fields and in fact i remembered many examples from my friends have been like that that many people are going to different fields one of my friends who did bioinformatics in the same institute as i did Mm-hmm. she is now going to work probably for fedex oh so okay. now you can see so <laughs> nice so uh, so it's not about the domain anymore if you are ready to learn the domain people are going people are, people have ability and they are now i think getting chance to use their abilities right so it's one of the good things of diversification that um for some people you go into masters or bachelor's degree with the herd mentality like the people you said so people go to some field and academics it's more prone that you will be driven by many other uh, other friends that are going to the same field you also go with them and you do your masters and things but you still might might enjoy doing many different things yeah. and because of diversification and allowing diversification in careers people are now getting chance to go in different fields So, like I said about this friend who is going to go to FedEx now. Uh, same way, right now in the current lab, I have a colleague who is who has done neuroscience for all his career. I mean, academic career. He has just finished PhD a couple of years back, and now he is going into consultancy for businesses. So, I mean, nothing has stopped him from Your using his too. his understanding from whatever problem solving he did in PhD. using it for business analytics and consultancy so there are lot of, lot many examples when i start thinking about them i can pick those people very clearly that right? they have transitions without any hesitation without hesitating about what will happen and what not but i'm so, really happy to understand that people are receptive and people are becoming open about the different career choices and like they are accepting people with the different and diverse background uh, which was i think previously not very common but these mm. these years i think they are becoming really accepting yeah. and i'm i'm really happy that uh, they are doing that so yeah it's very encouraging yeah. maybe different parts of world have different things maybe you both are from different now working in different countries so you might have different but, experiences but but you have but you have transition in india right not like uh, Right now, you are. Yeah, one of them was are, in, in Europe, but yes, mostly right. in India. But, the the but biggest. But yeah, that's that's pretty good. I feel. I think in the United States, it is career-wise, people have become slightly more open now mm-hmm. because of maybe the startup culture and all. Right. I had attended one meeting, startup accelerator meeting, a mm-hmm. um, couple of months back, and people over there were also saying that. Uh, in many parts of the world few years back people did not really value the failure if you are starting a new company the failure would mean that you will not get further funding but wow. nowadays maybe some kind of trend has started or whatever it is i do not really have a clear idea about it but failure is not really looked into that way failure has people are trying to look at failure as a learning stage Yeah, in a more positive light, I think that is useful in some way. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's actually uh, I think with with the current COVID pandemic going beyond lens of time, uh, mm-hmm. 
these kind of transitions are uh, very important and more we are seeing transitions happening very regularly uh, in our surroundings as well um, like a number of people who uh, did not really expect uh, to come up with like you know new ideas are coming out mm-hmm. with very different ideas based upon their skill sets uh, so i can give you an example of one of uh, my older friends uh, my uh, colleagues uh, so she was a doctor and uh, she was working for a genetic counseling company and mm-hmm. because of pandemic and all she took a break she learned yoga and now she is a certified medical yoga therapist who has okay. clients all over india us amazing Asia, yeah and it's like her online sessions are booked completely booked yeah. wow so, yeah so, so it's yeah, like i think that's that's something of a transition yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Like, you can't really say anything and particularly i mean because of the covid pandemic uh, people are forced to think out of the box people are mm-hmm. forced to dig out the skill sets uh, that they are strong at and uh, you know explore transitions uh, yeah. so having said that uh, like you know do you have any um, like, you know final advice for our listeners uh, anything that you want to say out to those young budding people mm-hmm. who are always in the uh, ambition of changing their paths changing their journeys and thinking out uh, beyond the blues uh, something they want they should do they should not do and that is one thing and second is if people want to reach you on the public mm-hmm. platforms the social platforms uh, where are you most frequently found okay so i do not know if i am at position of giving a very critical advice or very specific advice on anyone's career but and the other thing i could say is that see all this if if i talk about my career being diverse and being different being rich in transitions so like i said before also it is a consequence of many different things some of those things are my own actions but it's basically a consequence it's not so so if you go behind consequence if you go in pursuit of consequence that not that's not really an effective way of doing things so rather than i would suggest to anyone that rather than going in pursuit of consequence just focus on the process consequence is because of the process not the other way around right so maybe that would be my advice anything you do whether it's the advice or something else no on pursuit of consequence does not really it's not necessarily helpful it might accidentally become helpful but yeah accidental things are rare so <laughs> i would i would not go in pursuit of a consequence and since my career or anyone's career or what you do next what you do in future is a consequence uh pursuing that is not a good idea but focusing or investing in the process of that will make the consequence happen maybe that's, that's very well said that's what i think for myself at least mm-hmm. and is there uh, any yeah and if anyone wants to yeah, you are saying something rasika no it's the same any any particular platform are you like available to reach out to a people yeah so i have my own website on wordpress which is harshavardhankare.wordpress.com uh maybe uh you can put that in the video link so you know, the spelling and things become more clear and also on linkedin i am available and my linkedin handle is harshavardhan thare without spaces okay uh, so for all the viewers all these handles uh, linkedin as well as website handles will be there in the description below um, and you feel free to contact harshavardhan in case you have any doubt if in case you want to take inspiration if in case you want to like learn more about him uh, or simply connect and speak to him i mean uh, he's a wonderful uh, uh, like you know friend and uh, i think i have just spoken to him i think twice or thrice now and i'm simply amazed uh, with his journey and uh, i simply can't get enough of him like you know just talking to him more and more i keep learning more and more uh, so it's it's been wonderful with you uh, so um thank you so much harshvardhan i think it's been a wonderful uh, uh, discussion with you uh, today as well as our previous episode i mean it was just wonderful learning about your awesome journey with us um i think it is 
been really inspiration for all of us as well as all the viewers who are uh, uh, a part of this particular venture and who are sort of looking up to such kind of inspirations. Uh, so thank you so much once again. Thank you, Harsh well, Vardhan. Thank you, Asika and Deepak. And it was very really nice talking with you guys. It's really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.